Good evening, uh, colleagues and audience members. Uh, my name is Ed Reisinger. I am the chairman of the Land Use and Transportation Committee for the Baltimore City Council. We're here this evening to conduct our seventh work session on City Council Bill 12-0152, Transform Baltimore Zoning. During our sixth work session held on Tuesday, March 11th, we completed pages 77 through line 16 of page 85. On today, we will start on page 86, which is Title V, um, and work on as much as we can during today's tonight's session, and it's two hours. The Land Use and Transportation Committee intends to work progressively through the bill by reviewing it page by page starting with Title I and continue, continuing through the bill in, in, in the order it is written. City agencies and public will be asked to participate by raising the questions or comments as the committee is discussing the page they have a comment or question regarding. I encourage everyone to visit the City Council website, which is www.baltimorecitycouncil.com to stay updated with the section of that bill. The Land Use and Transportation Committee is working on at each work session. Um, in addition to the currently scheduled series of work sessions, the Land Use and Transportation Committee will likely hold, well, will hold additional hearings and work sessions. Info information about these will be distributed to the public as soon as dates, times, and topics are selected. Again, please check the Baltimore City Council website for the most up-to-date information. If you are unable to attend the scheduled work session and you wish to provide written comments or amendments, please mail it to the Office of Council Matic Services. Attention to Antoine Banks at 100 North Holiday Street, Baltimore, Maryland, 21202, or email at antoinebanks at baltimorecity.gov. Um, we are joined by my colleagues, uh, Councilwoman Mary Pat Clark to, to my right. To her left is Councilwoman uh, Ricky Spector. Uh, to her left uh, is the President of the City Council, uh, Bernard Jack Young. To um, my right is uh, Councilman Jim Kraft, who is the Vice Chair of the Committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. To my left is Councilwoman Sharon Green Middleton. Um, I've seen him here. He just got a haircut. Councilman Bill Henry is here somewhere. Uh, okay. Um, we're also joined by um, Andy Smallin in the audience representing Mayor Stephanie Rawlings Blake. Also, uh, we have Kara Kunst who is representing, uh, to the President's right, Kara Kunz is representing Pre President Bernard Jack Young. Um, I think that's it. Um, so we are ready to start on page 86, uh, Title V Applications and Authorizations. Um, uh, as courtesy, uh, the President of the City Council uh, Bernard Jack Young has a number of amendments, so what we're going to do is he's going to go, uh, go through all his amendments. You should have them in front of you, page by page, and, and then after that, um, if there's any questions or answers to his amendments or response, then you can re respond to it. Um, I think the President has a, uh, another commitment. Uh, to attend, so um, Mr. President. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, good evening to everyone. On page 86 at line nine, these are my amendments. Insert the following before the words and application for, except for various conditional uses, text and map amendments introduced as legislation pursuant to subtitle five of this title and after the word use permit, insert design review, and delete lines 15 to 23, and insert at line 15, 
if legislation have been introduced on the subject provided in section 5-2-1A1 of the subtitle on behalf of the owner of property to which the legisl legislation applies, the property owner or a person expressly authorized by the property owner in writing must submit an application pursuant to the subtitle 2. Uh, these amendments clarify that an ordinance can be introduced at any time, an individual property owner may file an application either before or after legislation is, is, is introduced, but the administrative application process does not affect the city council's legislative process. On page 88, line 12, strike board of municipal and zoning appeals. This cleans up the section by having applications all go through the zoning administrator, deleting the BMZA. Makes this language match page 86, where it says applications are submitted to the zoning administrator. On page, am I going too fast? On page 88, strike lines 22-24, and renumber B and C as A and B at lines 25 and 29. This deletes a reference to comprehensive rezoning that isn't necessary and is unclear. Comprehensive rezoning isn't an application, so this does not belong um, here. On page 90 at line four, after the words regulations of this code, insert of up to 25% of the applicable regulation in accordance with this, in accordance with the criteria specified in section 5-308 of this title, any greater variance must be authorized by legislation. This amendment adds language to clarify that BMZA may not authorize variance greater than 25, 25%, same as today, and gives the council the authority both to issue variances and issue variances greater than 25%. On page 90, delete line seven to 12, make line 12, item one, letter A, and item two, letter B. Renumber the items labeled one and two, and on page 90, line, thir line 13, strike, it is determined that the application is complete and insert the zoning administration. Uh, administrator has determined that an application is complete. This deletion makes this language conform to the First Amendment back on page 86 at the beginning of Title V. Uh, it also clarified that the zoning administrator gets applications and determine if they are complete. Um, on page 91, line 5, after the words major variance, insert the words by BMZA. Section 5305 is about how BMZA will hear major variance, so adding BMZA to the title of 5-305 puts that information up front. On page 92, Line 17 to 18, delete the zoning administration, I mean the zoning administration, uh, administrator or the BMCA, as the case may be, may find and insert a finding must be made. On page 92, line 24, delete the words the zoning administration, administrator or the BMCA, as the case may be, must also find and insert a finding must also be made. Uh, this section has approval standards applied to all variants that the city council or BMZA will approve. So the deletion in these two lines make the language generic to both city council and BMZA approvals. On page 94, delete lines one to four, renumber sub subsequent sections. This is another section that is unnecessary because the first page amendments clarify how applications are complete. On 94, delete lines six to eight, and on page 94, line 11, amend lines 10 to 12 to read, the zoning administrator must determine if an application for a conditional use is complete and forward the completed application to the Board of Municipal and Zoning Appeals for its consideration and action on the application. Uh, we number 5403 as 5402. This amendment clarifies what the zoning administrator does with applications for conditional uses that will, that will require BMZA actions. Um, renumber section as, uh, renumber section 5404 as 5403. And on um, 
And read number 5405, that's 5404. Uh, the Law Department Amendment on page 95, at the end of line 20, insert the following language. Any condition imposed pursuant to the subsection, subsection must be reasonably related and roughly proportional to the expected impact of the conditional use. For clarity, we have integrated the law department's amendment into this interlineated copy, but we defer explanation of this to the law department. Renumbering 5406 and 5405, renumbering, and this is on page 95, I'm sorry, page 96, renumber 5407 is 5406, and renumber 5408 is 5407, and renumber 5, 409 is 5408, and read number 54110 is 5409. On page 98, line 24, delete zoning amendments and replace with legislative authorization. This subtitle talks about the City Council legislative authority. Renaming this section makes it clear that this is about zoning amendments. PUDs, variants, master plans, or any other land use legislation the city council is responsible for. And also on page 98, <coughs> strike line 2628, inserted line six, this subtitle applies to all legislative authorizations created under this zoning code. This amendment clarifies that the subtitle is about the city council's broad legislative authority. Page 99, delete lines 1 through 14. These lines are deleted because it discusses council members applying to introduce a bill. The city council can introduce a bill whenever they deem it necessary and will not use an application process. <coughs> On page 99, renumber section 5504 as 5503. On page 15, delete submission, and on page 99, delete lines 16 to 20. At line 21, we renumber B to A and add words and agencies. On page 99, amend lines 22 to 24 to read. When a bill is introduced on subject provided in section 5-201 of, of this title, the bill must be referred to the Planning Commission and the Board of Municipal Zoning and Appeals for their consideration and written recommendation as well as any other agency or department designated by the President. On page 99 at the line 24, insert traffic mitigation language as written on page 101, lines 24 to 36. And on page 99, delete lines 25 to 30. This section looks a lot like this section. This section looks like a lot of amendments, but what it does is delete the more language about submitting application to the zoning administration administrator and clarifies that after a bill is introduced, it will be referred to the planning commission, BMZA, and other agencies as the president de designates. We number section 5505 as 5504. On page 99, at line 33, <coughs> insert upon submission of a bill for consideration and strike the words a proposed zoning amendment on line 33 and replace with words the bill. On page 100, line 14, delete the word application and insert the word bill. The small changes in the section clarified that a bill has been introduced. The Planning Commission then has a public hearing process. It also changes the word application to a bill because it is about the process bills go through. On page 100, delete lines 29 to 36. On page 101, delete lines 1 to 36. On page 102, delete lines 1 through 8. The, the deletion on this page reflect the amendments from page 98 to 99 that clarified that the city council introduced a bill first and then that bill is sent to the planning commission and other agencies for their report. Renumbering 5507 is 5505. On page 102, line 12, strike to be held 90 days without introduction. And on page 102, line 14, insert a bill authorizing a variance under the standards provided in section 5-308 of this subtitle. Strike the word, the bill, on line 14, and insert the words, any other bill must be evaluated. 
on page 102, strike line 17 to 23, at line 17, insert the words, the city council may approve, amend, or disapprove any legislative authorization. This section, this section discusses what action the city council takes on bills. First, the deletion on line 12 clarifies that the city council does not have to hold a hearing on the land use bill within 90 days. The addition of language on line 14 about variances clarifies what standards the city council will use to approve variances. Lastly, the deletions of line 17 to 23 remove language that only talks about zoning tax and map amendments and simply states that the city council can approve, disapprove, or amend any bill that comes before it. Renumbering section 508 as 5506 on page 103 at line 27, insert the findings of fact language after two in making the, ter the determination required by subsection B1 of this section. The city council must make findings of facts that address population changes, the availability of public facilities. Let me, let me go back. Address number one, population changes. Number two, the availability of public facilities. Number three, present and future transportation patterns. Number four, compatibility with existing and proposed development for the area. Five, the recommendation of city agencies and officials. And six, the proposed amendment consistent with the city's comprehensive master plan. On page 103 at line 27, renumber current two additional standards, general as three on page 104 at line nine, three additional standards rezoning from 1-1 one, one, District 4, and on page 104, delete lines 1 to 8. The city must use the state land use articles findings of fact when approving rezoning bills. This bill puts those findings of facts under the heading additional standards, which is after the section titled required standards. This amendment deletes the reference to findings of fact from the additional standards section at the top of the page 104 and moves it up under the, under the section titled Required Findings on page 103. We number section 5, 509 is 5507. Add the words and hearing requirements to page 105, line 11. This section includes information about how notice is given to the public as well as how hearings will be held. So when we suggest titling this section, Notice and hearing requirements to make it clear this section has information about providing notice and holding hearings. On page 105, line 12, <clears throat> delete the word city council. This is the first of three amendments that I'm going to propose to this subtitle. Here on page 107 and on page 108, I delete the word city council, BMZA, and zoning administrator from each of the, sub of the sections hitting. These amendments make it clear that the information in these three sections is about the type of notice the applicant is going to give the public before a hearing is held. On page 107, line 7, delete the words BMZA. On page 107, line 9, insert the city council and after the words conditional uses. In addition to deleting BMZA from this section hitting, I add the word city council to line nine because both the BMZA and city council will be hearing major variances and conditional uses. On page 108, line seven, delete the word zoning administrator. This is the third amendment that makes it clear that the information in the section is about how hearings for minor variances will be held. <laughs> and finally, on page 109, delete line 11, on line 12, delete words also provide and and comma after the word additional. On page 109, insert may be, may be provided after the words for all public hearings. This amendment clarifies that electronic notice can be provided for any public hearing under this code. And that's the end of the amendment, Mr. Chair. Councilman. Thank you, Mr. President. We are joined by uh, Councilman uh, Carl Stokes to my right. Also, there he is, Councilman Bill Henry. Um, we are also joined by Angela Gibson, representing Mayor Stephanie Mullins Blake. Um, anything else, Mr. President? You no, that's it for me. Um, 
Mr. Chair, thank you. Uh, now we will go back to page 86. Um, that was the president of the city council's. Yeah. Used to. Can we ask a questions about yes. this amendment? Yes. Okay. And this, yes. it's not a substantive question. It's more of a style one. It's when, when we were, when, when um, at the very end on pages 107 and 109. I'm sorry, 107 and 108. When you're removing zoning administrator, BMZA, and city council from the subtitle, from the from the headings, do we have to remove the hyphen, or will that does that automatically come out if you don't have something in front of it? I I think we technically we need to remove that. Okay, so can we we can just add that in, like the the words and then the hyphen for each of those three. Okay, okay yes. right. duly noted. Okay, duly noted. Councilwoman Clark. Um, that's quite a lot of work. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, so that we can follow it in context, I really appreciate the fact that um, we have been provided with, with an interlineated copy, but we, I, I would request that we now go back the way we with these amendments yes. that have been presented and go take them in context page by page so that we can absorb the what you know in context what each means yes uh, uh, okay yeah. thank you we're going to do that that's okay um any other council qu questions to regards to the president's amendments yeah okay we're now going to go back and start on page 86 for um, Title V applications and author authorizations. Um, so, subtitle two, is there any other amendments to uh, page 86? Paste that down to. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Joan Floyd, for the record. Um, yeah, this, um, this section as written actually does not provide for the filing of a zoning appeal by a neighbor. And, um, and actually, that's a conflict with the land use article. Uh, the land use article does provide for um, under 10405. It provides for an appeal to the board uh, may be filed by um, a person aggrieved by the, a decision of the administrative officer. So, and, and it's, a, it's a big, you know, omission in the, in the draft of the code that they, you're talking about zoning appeals, but you are not including um, aggrieved neighbors. But do you, um, yeah, this page one is to deal with the, with the, this is basically application, so. Sorry, a zoning appeal. Six. Zoning appeal, it says right there. So is, do you have an amendment or, or, or are you talking about the procedure um, to, the, to, to the law department? Can you? Well, I, I, think, I think Ms. Floyd's talking about something substantive, right? You're talking about something yeah, so we would probably and I don't have that I don't have that provision actually I should have brought it up um, so why don't we take a why don't we take a look at that because she would like to add you would like to add make she's making clear that we're gonna have that a neighbor assuming that well the state no what, when I'm when I'm always um, you know I'm sort of climbing up this hill always about let's have conformity with a, with a state land use article and the state land use article says that you know a person aggrieved may file a zoning appeal uh, you're saying here a zoning appeal may only be filed by the property owner or someone authorized well, like by the, the intent, of course, is that the, the, only the property owner would be aggrieved by that if you have a neighbor. So your, your, your interpretation that it's much broader than that, I think we'd have to take a look at that. We have it now. Why do we want to drop it? Question. Where are we? We're on page 86. Is it there? Is it on page 86? It's on page, I'm sorry, it's line 11. 
maybe, maybe the problem is that maybe the problem is having the ah. phrase zoning appeal in that line. Maybe that's the problem. Well, if you if you have an amendment or you want to change anything, submit it to the to the committee. Is that is that what she? You have it. Is this an amendment? I mean, or is it a procedure you're discussing? It's going to be a big, fat, hairy amendment. Yeah. Well, then, then have have let it be a Joan Floyd amendment. It's it's considered. It's duly noted. Councilman Henry. Councilman Clark, you got you. Thank, thank you. Sorry, thank I, I, I'm waiting to go through this page by page. That's what we're going to do. I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not there yet. I'm trying to figure out what um, Joan is saying. We're, we're, we're going through it page by page. We're on page 86. Yes. On line 11 right. of page 86, it says currently, an application for a variance, conditional yes. use, use permit, or zoning appeal must be filed by, and then it lists two categories of people, neither of which includes the concept of right. and somebody so, aggrieved by the decision. So let me, let me ask a question about that then, if I may. So a zoning appeal is one thing. I see that, I agree wholeheartedly that aggrieved neighbors should and do have the right to appeal. Let's say my colleague owns a piece of property. She wants to build a deck on the roof. I don't know. It's too big. She gets permission to do it from the zoning board. I live next door. She's blocking my son. I want the right. Wait a minute. Well, that wasn't what that wasn't the decision. That wasn't what she was talking about. She was oh. talking about an appeal of the zoning administrator's decision. If the board had made a decision, the neighbor would have had a chance to go to the to the to the board hearing and say something. But if something, if a decision is made by the zoning administrator, then under current state law, you can appeal that decision to the board if you're an aggrieved party. So. And that belongs on page um, 86, the, line 11? The suggestion I was about to make, and I think that this is going to be the, I don't think it's actually that big and hairy of an amendment. I think it's just that there should be a third Roman numeral that, that has the, uh, like, so under, on, on, under, under an application for a variant order must be filed by, one, the owner of a property to which the application applies, Strike the or. Two, a person expressly authorized by their owner in writing, comma, or. And then a Roman numeral three using, and then Roman numeral three would just be the language from the state code saying whatever it says. I mean, that, that, would, be, that would be right. What I'm trying to say is that I don't have that state code. Yeah, no, I get, I get that. I get that. I get that. And assuming that Ms. Lloyd is correct, then that would be exactly what you're describing. Right. Okay. That's all I was going to well, say. Okay. And here's my question. And so help me. Go, go along with what's being said. I can't apply for a variance on my neighbor's property. I can't apply, I, I'm reading, I don't see where we're at appeals. I can't ask for a conditional use on my neighbor's property or a use permit, but I can appeal a decision that's been made which is different, and so it's all in the same s sentence. So when we add in a neighbor as being eligible, we're adding them in to do all those things when we are trying to add them in. I'm on page 86, line 11, when we're trying to add them in for the right of appeal of decisions only. We, we can't give them the right to put in an application for a conditional use or an application for... But, for but, but I, uh, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't want to cut you off. I'm finished. Okay, I, I, you, you can't apply for a variance as an aggrieved well. party because you're not aggrieved by anything. The, 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 what makes you aggrieved is someone made a decision and it impacted you negatively. So the only one of these four categories of application 
that involves someone else already making a decision is the last one, a zoning appeal. In applying for a use permit, a conditional use or a variance, no one has made a decision yet. That's what you're applying for. You're asking for someone to make a decision, but you can appeal a decision that's already been made. So you're, you think that the word aggrieved covers that okay? I mean, that's, and that's, that's what Victor is going to confirm when he's going to is that deal correct? with it. Yeah, we, well, let's conf let, me, let me confirm that. I mean, I, uh, Okay, because I think it's, I'm, I have a situation right now where I'm pretty aggrieved that they even asked for a variance. And I'd like to appeal their right to do it. Now, I should point out, I should point out that we do have, uh, we have a whole section on page 330 of the code, of the, of the new code, uh, that talks about appeals. Um, well, page 330 we'll probably get to sometime in 2017. Yeah, it's a long way away, but the point of the exercise is we have to make sure that dovetails with what, what yeah what Ms. Floyd is talking about. So, you know, I, let's, we can tee this up and sort of move on, and, and I'll, I'll make sure that we, we, we've got yeah. something. That's, that's why I say it's duly noted. I mean, okay. Okay. Any, I, I just had another question. Councilman Kraft? Yeah, I, and I wanted to just follow up on what Councilwoman Clark was saying and just being sort of a devil's advocate or, or something, I don't know, but pain in the whatever, but when you talk about the variance, suppose using the variance from a reverse argument, um, somebody comes up and says, you know, you're building up to the property line or you're building up five feet from the property line, I'm the next door neighbor, I feel aggrieved, you know, um, I'd rather you have, if, if you build up 10 feet from the property line, that would be okay with me, but five feet from the property line's too close. Does this give me a right as an aggrieved party to come in and somehow ask that you apply for the variance, that, that there be some sort of variance um, that may be available as a reverse type of procedure. And I don't know, I'm just like Well, there's putting already it out the possibility say, of a negative appeal. I mean, right, and so what I'm saying is, do we, are, are we starting to open other doors in these other areas if we put aggrieved party as a person who could do these things? Um, you know, if we're going to do it, let's do it now. I could use it. Right. Or, you know, I mean, the same thing on conditional uses, you know, could we start having an aggrieved party coming in saying, well, you know, I, you know, I don't mind if they have it, if they have it under these conditions, these are my conditions. Um, you know, so they can come in and say, I'd like to see them do it under these conditions. Um, so it's, it's, it's like I say, it's a reverse of a administrative, like opening up an administrative proceeding by an outside person. We do, the, the term aggrieved person is used in our, in our appeals section, so we're going to capture them. The question is how it dovetails, because Mike, when I read this, I thought we, what we're trying to capture is that if we're going to have an administrative process, we're going to capture a fee with it, and that's why you have, that's why you have it. Now, that may not be what, what Ms. Feinberg wants, but that's how I was reading what was going on here. Um, but it needs, to be, it needs to be coordinated with what we have in the, in the appeal section. Right. You agree? I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, let me just... I, if, I'm, if I may finish just for a second. You know, I think this may be the front end. I mean, this part may be the front end. This is, I'm applying. This is the initiation of the process. Right. That's what this is. This is not the back end. This is the beginning. This is where we begin. So no one is appealing anything or anything. We're just coming in and say, I want to start the process. Yeah, it is. What is wrong with taking out the word, taking out zoning appeal, just taking it out of here? Does it really have to be here? That's, I guess that's probably what, what got me concerned to begin with. If we do have an appeals section, does, it, does that phrase need to be in this section at all? Well, it's, well, it's a, could the planning, should say, Laura, you want to answer that, why they have zoning appeal when they put an application in for a variance or conditional use or a permit? Why is the zoning appeal must be filed by, why is? Maybe this was the wrong terminology here, but this um, chapter deals with a 
a zoning change as well, the procedures to change your property. So in my first read, and I, I'm on the spot here, I have no problem with deleting zoning appeal because I don't think that's, it, At all. it's application for variances, conditional use, Permit. text and map amendments, I think covers it. Okay. Um, but again, it's. Yeah, okay. I get it. I, I, I'd like to suggest that after the word an application to initiate a variance, conditional use, use permit, or zoning appeal be considered. Um, and, and that way you can leave it in because the application process is the issue here. And so the, the fact that somebody may appeal it should be addressed separately, but, but this is initiating an action. And so if you can insert that word, I think that would um, clarify it all. And then you can leave the zoning appeal because some, somebody is gonna initiate that zoning appeal. You can protest it in the yes. appeal process. Okay. That's, so, that's doing it, yeah. What have we decided, please, Mr. Chair, to initiate? Yeah, and then we're gonna then we're gonna scratch off uh, or zoning appeal must be filed by, correct? Take out zoning appeal. Because the back end the back end on page three thirty is the appeal, so it's not I, I defer to others on that. Yeah. I, okay. I'm comfortable with the two initiate. Okay. All I, right. let me just say one thing which may or may not be relevant. You have to file a zoning appeal. In other words, a person has to, you don't just end up at the zoning board without applying to. In other words, you go to the permit office, they reject you and refer you to the zoning board for an appeal. You then go up there and they say, fill out this application. Then you may or may not, doesn't matter, you'll still get your hearing, but nonetheless, you apply. So I, I'm not gonna, I, I mean, I support Ms. Floyd's, I, what she's, her, the underlying and consistent issue of neighbors having the, the public having the right to a, appeal decisions. I just, right, I, I think. I'll take it to an Victor, issue. Yeah. Well, Victor. I'm saying that we can, if we, if we, I'm sorry. Wait, let's. Okay. Okay, Thank I you. mean, well, I was going to say that if we, if we struck appeal here, we can, we can handle any issue that may arise with an appeal. Or page the, 330. In the further, in the, in the section, um, page 330. Yeah, I get it. Okay. That'll work. Okay, we're still on page uh, 86. I have no amendments tonight, Mr. Um, Chairman. I, I am relying on the President's people to lay them out in, as we get to them on the page. Yeah. Okay. Dory noted. Anything, anything else on 86? No? Um, okay, page... Um, okay, Catherine Kraft. This is in the President's Amendment. Um, so the, um, the language in the Second Amendment here after deletes, uh, insert at line 15, if leg legislation has been introduced on the subjects provided in five, is that 201, is that 201? A, um, right, uh, of this subject on behalf of the owner of the property to which the legend, property owner, a person expressly, auth expressly authorized by the property owner in writing. Um, I don't recall 
do we have a, is, is there in the law somewhere, and it may be something I forgot from before, um, a method for this expressly authorizing a property owner and writing to act for someone? Do we have a process that constitutes doing that? That, that tracks the language just above there when you're talking about how you, how you uh, file. And what, all we've done here is just take the same language and insert it. Right, it's, it's deleted though in the President's amendments. Lines 15 to 23 are deleted in the amendment. And this is. Uh, we don't, yeah, if, the, if the question is what do we require as proof? Okay. So the property owner can, somebody can come in with a piece of paper that says that Councilwoman Clark authorized me to do this for her, but there's no way of document, there's no requirement that that be documented in any way. All I have to do is walk in with a piece of paper that says the property owner said I can do this. Yeah, I mean, I think that would probably be right the way this, the way what we have here. I mean, of, of course, they can clarify that by regulation if they wish to, so we don't necessarily have to be specific, but we could be. Okay, I'm just trying to make sure that we have some way to, to make certain that we've documented that because we're gonna run into that problem where somebody's gonna come in and say, I have the authority to act for Ms. Floyd and Ms. Floyd's gonna walk in and say, you know, who's he? I never told him that he could come in and represent me, you know, so that we gotta find some way to fix that or at least clarify that in there somewhere. But but to, to follow up on, on Councilman Kraft, I mean, there has to, it's an application, it's a form that they have to fill out, right? And it's gotta be in writing and they have to have the authorization from the owner that, hey, on his behalf, right? So that's. Um, I think housing is here, but they, they have experience with this on the permit applications. Okay. There's something similar where you sign and say, you know, okay. you're on behalf, yeah of the owner. And, then, um, and the same, I believe the same, I know the same holds, Hill, holds um, for zoning board applications. I mean, you've got a lot of contractors who represent people at the zoning board as well as at the permit desk. Um, and so whatever system they have right now for verifying, we should double check if housing could do that just to make sure they do have a system in place. It happens every week, every day, but that's a good question because how does anyone know, especially if somebody's out here representing Ms. Floyd, she would like to know, I know that. I would too. Um. I got so many papers in front of me. Uh, page 87, yeah. Mr. Chairman, we have a relatively minor amendment on page 87. Um, it is our amendment 5-7, uh, and it's fit page. What line? Uh, okay, it is 201D1, uh, line 29. And um, it, this is the section where it requires a site plan for conditional use or variance must be included with the drawings. And the Planning Commission voted to uh, make an exception to the site plan requirement if the use is only internal and there's no site that's um, relevant to the conditional use. So it would be at the end of that sentence to say, except for. Uh, at the end of 29, Roy? Uh, the end of line 29. Where it says accompanied by a site, site plan. Site plan, and then it would and be, except for a use that is entirely internal to an existing building. Any other amendments? Page 
it just came to me. Um, the question about the ownership and who can initiate it. Um, I recently went over to the permits office to get a permit on a city-owned property, and what they required was a right of entry from the owner to, to get the permit and to initiate that process. And so I assume that the right of entry would not only come from the city being the owner, but the property owner if it was uh, a non-government entity as that's, well. And that's basically a procedure that they have in place it's already? Written, yes. It's a written document okay. that I had to produce in order to get a permit to do something. I, I just, I just want to, whether you agree or but as chairman, we're looking over the last seven or eight hearings, work sessions we've had, is that, is that what I like to do is try to focus on the amendments and concerns to the amendments because I found out, looking at the amendments, I mean, looking at the minutes from the past work sessions, we seem to get off track on the amendments and we're looking at, like, who does this or who does that? So any questions or concerns regards to um, the process on whether it's housing or DPW uh, or the zoning administrator, I think that's something that if we have a question or concern, like, it, like when you're asking about the, the um, it's a process that goes a permit. Well, then that answer could be answered by the housing department. This is not where we should be discussing a process on the permit department. I think we should be dealing with what the amendments are. And I know that sometimes we may need clarity, but I don't want to see us really get sidetracked going to something completely different than what we're supposed to be focusing on. So. Anything else on page 87? May I ask something? Yes. Mr. Chairman, I know that we're going sequentially, and I must apologize to you that I cannot absorb all these amendments um, this, the quickly. Came, yeah, right. this quickly. This quickly so that I, I would like to um, say that I would like the opportunity and I think all of us, I'd like us to be able to dis either discuss these amendments as we come to them on the page or reserve the right to come back. I, I thought I knew what the amendments were. I'm not sure I do and I'm really interested in this title because it's crucial. They, and so I, I'd like to follow this sheet of amendments so that we can see where they fit into the pages as we go through and what they mean and what changes they make, if I may. No, I, I, I agree 100%, Councilwoman. Thank you. Thank you. So we're done, Pete. 87, now we're on page 88, and there are uh, an amendment on page 88. Whose amendment was that on page 88? Applications, uh, the president? Okay. Um, that was line 12 strike, okay, he did that. So, right, Councilwoman, do you? All right, so on page 88, line 12, strike Board of Municipal and Zoning Appeals. So basically, um, what exactly is, it may, if I may ask the President's uh, rep, what is the, what are we doing here? Uh, this amendment deletes, um, so it says that applications submitted to both the Zoning Administrator and the Board of Municipal and Zoning Appeals, we delete the reference to the Board of Municipal and Zoning Appeals because on the previous, on page 86, where it first talks about how you apply, things go just to the Zoning Administrator. So it would make sense that if you're going to have to amend your application that you submitted to the Zoning Administrator, the only person that you would amend things to would be the Zoning Administrator. So then any amendments go to him and then he disperses them to other agencies or departments as needed. So after an application, he determines it to be complete. Any change made to the application 
must be submitted to him. Yes. I say him because he happens to be him at the moment. Right. And no later than 15 days before the hearing. So the hearing is held by the zoning board, is it not? So does that, and then what happens? He gives it to the zoning board? Okay. Yes. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, lines 22 Wait to 20. She, do you have a question on that? On that same section, do you want me to address that now or wait? What? I can't keep it. The, the question, uh, the comment is on that same section. Do you want me to wait or address no, it? No, you wait for Catherine will be clock. Okay. I thought you had a question. Go ahead, no, I'm Catherine. just following right now the president's amendments, and I got they're it. on line 22 and to 24. Um, so okay. if, if they're next, fine, and if they're not, go. The chairman. What? No, we're going, we're uh, going I just, back. Right, let me finish. We're going back on the... We're going, also going back on the president's amendments, but there's other amendments from other entities you could present that. So you have a question on page 88. Lines, lines 22 uh, to 24. Now you want to ask on 22 and 24. And then if you have an amendment or whatever, then we'll go back to you. Go ahead. Okay. Is that what you're saying? It's being, uh, the, the president recommends that we strike lines on page 88, lines. 12. To oh, 22, 22 to 24. 22 to 24, okay. So, scope of section. This section does not apply to an application for the reclassification of property that is or was a subject of a pre proposed comprehensive rezoning. What does that mean? So, we actually found the, that scope of section description confusing and unnecessary because this section then goes on to talk about, um, and it's the same language that exists today when a zoning application has been denied, there's a one year waiting period before you can go back to the BMZA. That's so what we, they tell me. So, <laughs> so we deleted this first scope of section regarding the um, comprehensive rezoning because it doesn't seem to, it, it doesn't seem to do anything and we didn't think it needed to be there. So it's just add, it's just, just a deletion, and we don't replace it with any It language. doesn't mean anything, so it doesn't mean anything to take it out. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Um, going On page 88, right? Yes, but going what back. Line, where are you at? Going back to um, lines, I would like to go to lines um, 12, no, 10 to 13. And, actual, 13. and actually, I'd like to go to, I, I, um, Line, line 14, well, line 10 through 14, okay. That's the subject of my, of my comment here. I, going back to remembering the, uh, the BMZA um, reforms that we worked on a couple of years ago and got some changes, I remember the issue of completeness coming up, and I remember the issue of how we would deal with changes that were made you know, after the application was available for us to see and how and what what our, in the community, what our, you know, situation was when these would, would come up. And I, and I see the rationale for the uh, 15 days, you know, you can't come in right a, co a couple days before the hearing and come in with a change. However, that rationale seems to kind of, uh, kind of be defeated by line 14, because it still allows someone to come in on the day with the change. And um, I think we talked in years past about how if they were going to do that, they needed to have a continuance so that people could, could respond to that change. Because once it comes up at the hearing, there is no opportunity Absolutely. to. Uh, so that's what, I, what was Absolutely. my comment. Councilman Kraft. No, I totally agree with that. I think we've all been in those cases and we're in them regularly where um, not only do we have um, instances where there are changes made, but today, I mean not today, but it, 
last week we had an instance where the application was incomplete and yet the case was still on the docket in anticipation of the documents being provided by the time of the hearing, the additional information being provided by the time of the hearing, um, the request was made for postponement because the information wasn't there yet. The postponement wasn't ruled on pending the information arriving, which makes no sense. So, um, you know, I think there has to be some sort of language, and I don't know whether it, whether it's substance or you know, um, but there's got to be some sort of thing where you have a, a measure of what that is. If there is something that's substantive that is um, changed to the application, then I think that the hearing has to kick out. If it's something that's not substantive, then the hearing could continue. But I think it needs to have something like that. I, I would like to, um, to it agree with Ms. Floyd, agree with my colleague. I'm dealing right now with a CHAP hearing. I now learn over the phone, oh, you haven't seen the latest application to CHAP. Now, a site plan. Now, there is a deadline for submissions that is way past. And no, I haven't seen the latest. I have the one that was required to be delivered to the community and to CHAP from the developer. I haven't seen anything else. Now, I'm going into a hearing Tuesday. So basically, I, I want to go back to the zoning board on this one and say, delete that sentence and thank you for focusing on it. There is absolutely no way that there should be changes after 15 days before a zoning board hearing, substantial or minor, because who's going to define substantial, which is another issue I'm dealing Mr. with. It, whoever it is won't talk to us till well, we walk in the door. Okay, so should we delete, you want to delete, delete this? Delete the whole sentence. Delete this. Take it out. Delete it. There is no wriggle room. 15 days before your zoning hearing, what you have in is what you got in, nothing later. Period. We have it, we have it deleted, okay? I think we've got the votes on that one right now. Well, Move we gotta, approval. Okay. Uh, we're not making no motions now, but it, it's, 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 we got it down there to, it, to be deleted. Thank you. Thank you. Um, page, we're still on page 88. And that was 10 through 14, right, Ms. Floyd? No, just, 14. just 14? Okay, line 14 and 2? Okay. Um, yeah. You got that? Uh, page 89. Anyone have any? Yeah. Councilman Henry? Oh, there was also on 88, we, uh, President's amendments included removing lines 22 through 24 and page 89 yeah, we, did we did that okay all right okay okay then um then on 89 i have a question on page 89 what on, line um about may well it's a it's a it's a it's a larger question it's but i'll i'll, I'll give you the reference on lines 23 and 24 where it says a reduction in the number of off-street parking spaces by no more than 10 percent of the applicable minimum requirements, that constitutes a minor variance. And so the assumption I'm making here is that anything from 11% up to 75% is a major variance, but that doesn't appear to be separately articulated. No? Um, just a point of clarification. Um, for those that are familiar with the existing code, there is the 75% variance to the board. In drafting this new code, that was intentionally left out um, because our experience has been that if you write that the board has the authority to give Up to X number of variance. That's what people ask for. They just do it automatically and 
sometimes, with all due respect to the board, they don't really consider the proper variance standards. So this code expressly prohibits those numbers for the reason that it should be that every variance, it, not to prescribe a number to it, but that every variance should meet the standards of uniqueness and hardship under a variance, that that is a, a cleaner approach. And um, this section on minor variances is really based on um, the current legislation that council passed a couple of years ago to deal with some of the challenges with row houses because it's awful hard to, per, you know, we, we had a case, Councilman Kraft is very familiar with it in Highland Town, where a house was being renovated just to bring it up to code and have the proper stairway widths, they needed a small variance in the yard and it was, I think, two feet. They went to the board, there was, there was some issues and it got approved but then it got appealed and the court said, no, you, you can't really prove that this row house is unique and therefore eligible for this kind of variance, um, which really creates an undue hardship when somebody's trying to modernize a, a row house. So this section, minor variances, was created, modeled on the legislation the council passed to deal with those types of situations so that there's a little wiggle room and and we had to get, get actually some state enabling legislation to, to be able to do this, um, to give us what every other jurisdiction has on that. Anyway, long story short, there is no upper number and the minor, so if it's, it's either minor or major. Well, that's good and bad for my purposes then because my intention had been to somewhere way later where that actually had the specific numbers, that was where I was going to ask for an amendment where we would cap what the board could do at a substantially lower number than 75% and create a separate process by which if you needed a larger variance, it would follow a by ordinance process. Is that where, next, all right. Well, I mean, I, I think the, um, the president's amendment dealt with the 25% on bulk. I don't think I saw anything on the parking. I, I, okay. I think, then I think that's where we're, I think that's where we're going then. Where? Right, okay. So it just means when we get to page 90, we might need to clarify that that refers to parking as well. Okay, I got you. All right, thank you. Uh, Councilman Clark? Let's go back to what, the, to the issue that the councilman raised. I realize that the president has no amendments on this page. Um, I'd like to take, I'd like to take um, number, Roman numeral three right off the page, um, and whereby the zoning board, on page 89, whereby the zoning board is allowed to go up as a high as a 10% waiver of the required parking spaces. Um, I don't want the zoning board to have any waiver re rights under, um, under their powers for parking spaces. Oh, is it, well, what is it? The that's administra the administrator. Well, that's even less public. So. I, I would not want the administrator, I would not want the administrator to have any powers to waive off-street parking spaces that are required by code because in my district, more and more every day, there's no place to park. And if somebody wants to build something, they need to provide off-street parking. Um, yeah, I would say that I probably have more parking. I, don't, I challenge finding anybody that has more than me, probably Councilman Cole and Federal Hill.
but I don't think there's anybody that has Close more than that <laughs> in terms of um, parking difficulties. Um, so it, I'm reluctant to take this out, even though I have those parking difficulties, um, only because I think at, at some point, um, you know, at some point we've got to just force people to stop having cars. And if we stop building parking lots and we stop telling them that they have to provide off-street parking spaces, then they just won't be able to buy more cars because there literally will be no place to park them. Um, so, you know, at some point we've got to figure out um, some way to do it. And I'm not sure if this is, gets me there or not. I've got to think it through a little bit more. That's We're still right. early. But can we just think about it a little yeah. bit more before we take it out? Right. But my, my inclination is to try to find a way to just force people to have fewer cars and well, whatever mechanism we can do. I understand. Councilman. Oh. Oh. Actually, right, I wanted to respond to two very specific things about that. One is I, com I'm com I completely understand and agree in terms of the at some point we got to get people out of cars and that's going to mean that we won't need as many off-street parking spaces. But we got to give them better mass transit before we're going to get them out of cars and not everybody has the circulator yet. <laughs> we, you that, know, that, yeah. just not to engage in a mass transit debate because that's a whole other issue, but, you know, I know this is almost a chicken and egg right. argument, but at some point we just have to bite the bullet and, and, expand and, the circulator. and do it. Exactly. And, and it's going to be cars first before it's going to be mass transit. But the specific thing I wanted to say was I, I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable with thinking a little bit more before we remove this particular part, the 10 percent, but I do strongly believe that the board should not be able to grant larger ones. And when we get to that, we'll, we'll talk but about it. If right. I may, this is the administrator. Right. I have, we do not, we love the first district and admire Canton, but we know we don't want to be like Canton. And I've already got people, it, only because there's no place, it's like Charlie on the MTA. So, basically, I don't want, however qualified, a person named an administrator in an office sitting with a pile of papers giving a 10% break on the parking requirements for a development because I want that to at least be where people can be for or against that kind of relief, not just walk in an office on a busy day and get someone to sign off on it. We don't, we're not voting now, but I have people in my neighborhoods saying this to me, okay, we get that they need to find a permeable material that meets the building code because on Elm Avenue and West 38th Street and the vicinity of that rotunda in Hamden, they need to build parking pads behind their houses to survive now. And so they, I need not to have this. It's Castleman Stoney noted, we understand. Um, just a point of clarification. Um, mm -hmm. And they don't have the alleys. A uh, point of clarification for the council, the minor variances are not administered automatically. Uh, the zoning administrator, as described in 5304, it must be posted on the property and they can be only issued if no one files a complaint after, I believe it is 10 days of posting. If the posting goes up and there is a complaint, then it goes to a full board hearing. 
So we, we put that in there to, to try to achieve that balance. If I may have, say one we're not, thing. Okay, we're not going back into the neighborhood again, are we? I mean. Just to ask you to take a picture of a posted notice on Crittenden today. It is lying in a, in a pile on the grass. Absolutely. That's a procedural. Still, 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 on, procedure. still on 89, uh, still on page 89. I, I guess I do have a question then in terms of where it says on lines 10 and 11. Were you on page 89? On page 80, still on page 89. 10 and 11? The variance procedure applies only to changes right. in bulk and yard requirements. It does not apply to changes in the uses allowed within a zoning district. Just as a clarification, is parking considered a bulk and yard? Thank you for bringing that up. That's our amendment um, on, uh, that was a typo, and that is our amendment uh, blah, 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 uh, 5-8, that it should include signage, parking, and loading. The point of that sentence is really to make it clear that you can't by the, the variance change a use, but uh, we inadvertently left out the signage, parking, and loading. Well, between calling attention to your amendment and calling attention to the President's amendment, it sounds like my work here is done, so thank you very much. Um, oh. Joan? Thank you, Mr. Chair. On the same section, um, I'm going to go back to a comment uh, that I made at the prior session about uh, the need for a definition of bulk regulations, bulk requirements, bulk standards, what we needed to have that, and that comes into play here where we don't, um, I don't, you know, I would need that at this section as well. So are we getting any closer to having something like that? I think we agreed on that when we... I believe that was agreed to be done when we talked about the definitions in Title I. Noted. We're gonna well, we, we, we don't have it yet, the, a working definition. No, it's, it's a work okay. in progress. It's like trying to change flat tires while it's moving. So. <laughs> did, did, I mean, we can work with your office to draft that. I didn't realize that that, was in, that ball was in our court, if you're... Question. Councilman Clark. Mr. Chairman, um, I, would, uh, I would maintain that parking is a use, and I would um, ask that we not adopt planning's amendment to its amendment to its um, provisions. Um, I think it was very fortunate that um, they made the, the description that they did that says it, re, it, it applies to bulk and yard requirements. Parking is the use of a land, and um, I, I know we're not voting on that now, but I just want that in the record. Okay, so you're, in the record, you're noting that you do not support the uh, planning department's amendment? Uh... I do not. Okay. I do not support that, and I do not support um, item uh, Roman numeral three. We have it. Care, it's, we have it? Yeah, okay. Um, we're still on page 89. Okay, now we're on page 90, and I know that the president had his, his amendments to 90. So, uh, so um, we're on, right now, page 90, the president's amendments, and then if there's any questions on his amendments, then we'll go to any amendments from anyone else. Okay, so we have the President's amendments, um, page 90 at line four. Um, all right, any questions about the um, President's amendments on, line, on page um, 90, line 4. 
Um, I would just like to note that we will amend our amendment, which specifies the BMZA can't do more than 25% to clarify that that's bulk and yard and either parking or not parking or signage and not signage as the case may be. Um, and then we added in language that says any greater variance must be authorized by legislation. So if somebody has a major variance where they're asking for more than 25% of a deviation, it would come to the city council. Yeah, yeah, Councilwoman. Question. I'm just going through my mind real quickly. It's easy. <laughs> um, do we have currently legislative power to go beyond the 25%? I don't remember ever doing so. You, you do not. You're I, limited I'm, in the current zoning code, and I, this would allow you more if the property I'm not needed it. Sure, we should. Have, I mean, what is zoning really? Zoning is really a guarantee to people that own property that there are certain things that cannot happen to them, that there's a certain stability in that ownership guaranteed by the municipality through its zoning law. That's what zoning is. So even though we, we are trying to put ourselves back into this code by amendment, and I fully support that. I also know that we are still part of government, and that as such, suspect, and I would question whether we should give ourselves the power to deviate more than 25% from what every owner is relying on in terms of what can happen next door. I think it's a good point. I think if you, when you start getting up higher than that, the exception becomes the rule. Really, and we'll be beat up on by who knows what to um, change the nature of neighborhoods. And I find it changing already with just the 25% in ways that people find very scary. So Mr. Chair. Count, Councilwoman, microphone. Mr. Chair, what my colleague is speaking to is that it can only be 25%. Right. And that, that's enough. Really? Right, okay. We, we shouldn't go crazy here. Okay, got it. Um, ladies and gentlemen, the Vice President had to um, chair a meeting in his district and he was, um, late for that, so um, we're excusing him to do that. Uh, page on uh, President's Amendments, uh, page 90, uh, deletes lines uh, 7 to 12, inserts new words on line 13. Um, Ms. Kunz, do you want to uh, discuss any of that? Um, just to say that the initiation, we delete it here and in other places because the beginning of this title discusses initiation and we can't see it in multiple places because it could cause potential confusion or conflicts. So we delete the references to initiation here and in each of the other subtitles. Mostly, yes. Yeah. All right. Um, we're still in 5303. Anybody else in 5303? Okay. Um, 5304 on page 90. Anybody out? Anybody there? Okay. Page 91, um, line 5, uh, President's Amendment. Uh, very um, simple insertion there, major variance by the BMZA. Um, okay. There are no other President's Amendments on. Page 91. Is anybody else? Ms. Floyd. Um, okay. Thank you. A couple of things. Um, first of all, on page 91, lines two through four, and I, you know, hope Mr. Willis will will weigh in on this issue. Um, and it has something to do with the issue I brought up earlier about the the land use article in the state. It seems that when we look at the bottom of page 90 and the top of page 91, it seems like we're creating a system whereby the neighbors will waive their right to appeal if they don't come in at the zoning administrator stage. 
That seems to be what this is setting up here, where there's a posting and you must um, come in at that stage and have an objection, otherwise you're going to waive it and as according to the top of page 91, you are not going to be able to appeal to the BMZA. So I have two, two thoughts about that. One is, does this not actually create a conflict with the land use article, which gives the aggrieved person the right to appeal to the BMZA? The second comment is, um, and this is kind of, it's kind of funny that Councilwoman Clark brought up a posting issue, because the question would then be, well, what if the posting doesn't really happen? And we have these situations where the posting doesn't happen. Now, I can't speak to a zoning administrator situation where posting doesn't happen, but I know there are BMZA situations where posting doesn't happen, and it may still go forward. Well, so posting doesn't guarantee that anyone knows about anything. Let me ask this of, of our lawyers. Um, so if we're looking at the bottom of page 90, which is sort of the, the lead into the appeal. So if no written objection is timely received, the zoning administrator must render a written decision on the application within 30 days of the end of the required posting period and either approve, approve with qualifications or deny the application. So we have the predicate, and that is the decision, the written decision has been issued, okay? Now, the next paragraph, which is Mrs. Ms. Floyd's referring to, or the one to which she refers, is if aggrieved by the decision of the zoning administrator, then it says the applicant may appeal that decision to the BMZA. What if we just change that word, the applicant, to the aggrieved party may appeal? I think this is covered. Again, procedurally, the idea is you want to put a small addition on your house, you're within the 10 percent. You go to the zoning administrator, he said this is within the 10 percent. He pulls out his rules and his posting sign and it goes up. And then if there is objection, if you look at section B at the bottom of page 90. No, but this, the language of the decision says if no objections received. Right. If no objection is received, by the zoning administrator, he can issue the permit or not issue the permit. If the property owner, if he doesn't issue the permit, the property owner can appeal that to the board. But, but it, what we're saying is, what we're saying is, this isn't just about the issuance of the, the decision of the zoning administrator, whatever, you know, that decision may be something that the aggrieved party or the, that someone else may have an objection to, not just the applicant. The, the person may not have filed a written objection to the initial application, but when the decision is made, they may not be happy with the decision. So even though they didn't object to it, what we want to do is preserve, preserve their right so, or if the sign blew down, like we're talking about, where a sign blows down, they don't see the sign, the decision is made, they sort of get a second bite at the apple because the sign is posted, person doesn't see the sign. So they don't write the objection and send the objection in. The zoning administrator issues the decision the next door neighbor sees the decision and says, oh my God, how did that happen? How did that happen? They said, didn't you see the sign posted? The person says, no, I didn't see the sign posted. And they said, well, you do have 30 days to appeal that decision because you are an aggrieved party. You filed your appeal and you get your hearing. Why does it have to be specific in language, a grief party? Why can't it just simply say a, an appeal can be made after the written decision? That would be don't have anything to be, that don't opens up. Don't have to up. identify I mean, anybody. Right, because the, um, where it says the applicant, right now it's, it, it limits it to the applicant under, under line two of that section. It's limiting it solely to the applicant who it can be the person that appeals. 
What we want to say is other people may appeal. An appeal, uh, an appeal. Right. Period, without having to identify well, who the. Well, it starts out and says, if aggrieved by the decision, the applicant may appeal. So you would have to assume that there's something that leads no. you to appeal. I mean, chances are you're not going to be appealing unless you are aggrieved. So, but, but, in the, but we should be staying with state law uh, because state law says aggrieved party. So if we, so as long as we person, hang on. Aggrieved person. Aggrieved person. I'm, I'm, okay. I hear you. All right. So have that's to stay what, with that language of the state law. Okay. So that's adequate to cover the landscape we're trying to cover. Yes. Okay. And we will. Can you write? How do you write? How would you say it? So we May just I insert ask? the word uh, in line two on page 91. Instead of applicant, we would say the aggrieved person. Person. The aggrieved. Person in the middle. Per is that good? Is that okay with you? Okay. The aggrieved. Okay. Ken. Okay. Aggrieved person. Yeah. And then I have a question. Okay. Well, we're gonna j we're gonna change that to aggrieved person, mm -hmm. and we we're okay on that. Okay. All right. All right. I know. Take your time. Cara, you have that. Okay. Um, Councilwoman Clark. Sorry, um, Mr. Chair, Mr. Vice Chair. Um, let me go back for a minute, if I may, just back up a little bit to this posting, since I'm living with this issue right now. Um, I don't think that that's. When it's it it alludes to a posting, but. My concern is, what, what's the, what, you, all right, let me well, put it this way. Councilwoman, if you want to wait a minute. Yeah. If we get the title, um, if we get on the, right down here a little bit further, it talks about the notice. So and we, the postings? Yes. What, what the notice we get. But I just want to make sure that they matter. Right, okay. I've just learned that they, they don't, and, um, in some instances, and that um, I'd like to make sure they always do if they're if they're required. Right. Um, when we get, um, I think it's subtitle five. Subtitle six is on the notices. Okay. I, I just so want to can... make sure if it's referencing posting, posting matters. Okay. All right. We are on um, Ms. Truhart. We're still on uh, the top of page ninety-one. Correct. And my question is about the 30 days, and does the um, administrator have discretion in um, accepting? No, it's a mandatory language, 30 days. 30 days. Right. So, so if I go away to my summer home and you post a notice and I come back on the 31st day. 30 days. Got to be a cutoff point. Yep. Oh, that sucks. I don't like that. Well, there's got to be a drop dead date, you know. Well, no, that, that you need to give the administrator flexibility for extenuating circumstances. Yeah, because everybody will have an extenuating circumstance. Yeah, uh, then you need to pick somebody who's got a brain who can the, figure um, out what's no, good I mean, and it, what's not. It's just not. like courts and other things. They have, there are dates that you have to meet. So 30 days is not an unreasonable amount of time. Yeah. Councilman, Councilman Henry says it is a long time to stay at your beach house. <laughs> uh, 5305, 5, 5305, anything else on 5305, Ms. Floyd? Thank you. Um, starting with lines 11 through 12 where we're um, talking about requiring a hearing to be concluded no more than 60 days from the receipt of an application. I just want to throw a couple um, shots at that. Um, there are other, there are some reasons for delay that are included on in this section, but there are other reasons for delay. For instance, one that came up very recently such as not having enough board members to conduct a hearing. That's a reason there could be a delay. 
cancellation of a board docket because there's too, because of a snow event. There's another reason for delay. So I'm not sure that this section is really encompassing all the, I mean, really taking into account um, this 60 day, this 60 day thing and, and, and what, and it also what really happens if they don't meet the 60 days. I, well, it says subject to paragraph B, except is provided in subject in B, and it says the applicant uh, may waive the the applicant may waive the time limit um, by requesting a postponement from the BMZA. So there may be other mechanisms in paragraph B for waiving the time limit. So maybe we need to look at other methods for waiving the time limit. Okay. That, that would be. I think that would be appropriate. And then if, if I can go ahead on to, to the th line 30 of the same section. Um, Wait a minute, I want to make I'm sure sorry. we have that. All right, line 30. Well, yes, line 30. Um, um, when it mentions the board having to um, do something upon a majority vote of the board at a publicly scheduled meeting. First of all, um, the phrase publicly scheduled meeting doesn't really seem appropriate because there is no other kind of meeting that the board can conduct um, that I know of. And I think the law department may be agreeing with me on this. Um, the other thing, I would just have a question. Um, there's an intention here, and I'd just like to have it clarified. When you're saying majority vote of the board, are you saying uh, a majority of those present or majority of those, uh, the positions? And that's just asking for clarification. Um. The, um. That's an is interesting question. Um, I mean, is it, when we say majority vote of the board, are we talking about a majority present in voting? Are we talking about a majority of the quorum? Um, Mr. Willis, you are an expert. This is a procedural matter. What are their rules? Do you yeah, I mean, I guess what they're going to say, the, the, the rules do cover it now, and I don't know what the rules, what, what they might say. It's not something that's in the You've code. Got to be talking in a microphone. I assume Apologies. we're looking at the it's rules of the It's not in the code. It's in the rules of the board and their operating procedures. And they have different rules for different actions on what's a majority yeah, I know currently. We, I know we've had this issue before because when you have five people and there are only three are there and then you agree to be, have the three hear it and then you make, they make a two to one decision, then your board is, you know, your board is making a decision, two out of five are making the decision, so the other three could have voted against, but you're allowing those two to make your major the majority vote. Um, so the question is, do we want to remedy that by statute, or do we want that to continue to go through the operating procedure? Um, just as a point of, of clarif not a clarification, maybe information for the council on this, um, through our drafting process, we did hear from many citizens some frustration with the um, outdated nature of the zoning board's rules, um, specifically to posting. And as you've noted later in this title, we actually suggested that some of the bare requirements of posting be in statute as opposed to rules because they hadn't been updated. Um, but we didn't go to that issue of really their um, internal operations, more the, the public side, which no, was just I'm, in the posting. No, I know. I've written a lot of amendments to this section of the code over the years to try to make them report yes. more and, and be more public about all of this. If you're going to be, I think if you're going to be fooling with this, I mean, you probably want to make a, if, if you want to say it's always, you, you should have a, a uniform rule unless there's some reason to say this less than, than the full membership. So you could put that in a definition that when we talk about the majority of the board, we could define it that way. But, you know, you probably should be uniform unless you have some reason why it shouldn't be. I think we should look at that. I think we should be careful. I'll tell you why later. Okay, we can, I know, I think. 
Let's have the discussion about it, okay? Let's do that. All right, so we're looking at um, line 30 of page 91, line 30, and we're going to review, we're going to review what constitutes a majority vote, okay? Uh, I would also uh, like to put in the record that I want to come back to reconsider and our third time through this code um, to reconsider the 60 days in which the board has to do something. Frankly, half the time I wish the board would just do nothing and leave us alone. And sometimes it works in our favor that way. I don't want to be told that the board's got to hear it even though this, that, or the other thing because of the 60, I can hear it now because of the 60 day rule. And I, most zoning hearings I've attended in my many years in office, I wish had never been held, so, ever. So we've added to the question with regard to lines yes. um, 11 and 12 on page 91. Um, what other methods are there for waiving the time limit um, other than those in section B? And um, why 60 days in the first place? Right, I'd like to address the whole issue of a time limit. I'm against it. I just let it drift forever, usually. Okay. Until All right. people move to Florida or something. 5305, anybody else in 5305? Okay, um, 5306, going from page 91 over to page 92. Anybody else on page 5306? Section 5307 on page 92, anybody? Section 5308 on page 92. 5308 on page 92. I've got lines 17 and 18 and lines 24 um, of, the, um, of the President's amendments. Uh, um, Ms. Kunst, do you want to talk to um, us about those two? These two do almost the exact same thing. It deletes the Zoning Administrator and Board of Municipal and Zoning Appeals as people find, making findings because variances are going to be done by those two entities as well as the city council and just writes a finding must be made in on page, uh, on lines rather 17 and line 24. Okay. Comments, Councilwoman Clark? Yes, I'd like to, I, I can't let the opportunity go by. Oh, um, page uh, 307 on page 902. Uh, well, excuse me, I gotta take my glasses off. Um, the uniqueness, wait a minute, where is it? Okay, here I am, I'm, my apologies. 5308, approval standards, um, line 16 to 22. These are in the current code and are without a doubt the most confusing collection of words begun with a capital and ended with a period in, in law. Here's what they say. In order to grant a variance, the zoning administrator or the Board of Municipal and Zoning Appeals, as the case may be, must find that because of the particular physical surrounding shape or topographical conditions of the specific structure or land involved, an unnecessary hardship or practical difficulty as distinguished from a mere inconvenience would result if the strict letter of the applicable requirement were carried out. I don't think anyone knows what that means exactly, and it's crucial because everybody that wants a variance at the zoning board needs to meet the test that's outlined here. And yet, it's 
There must be a better way to say what it is. I'm in a situation right now why, where, for example, we're talking about specific houses and the, and the uniqueness is uh, the larger land they're on, not the houses. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So there's nothing unique about the houses, but the land, you know, it's, it is, but not the houses that are being proposed. So what in the world are we talking about? What does this mean so that people, all people, can understand it, including the zoning board? The, I mean, this language is all over case law. <clears throat> it's you know, it's it's replete. And what they're what they what they usually are trying to what they're trying to do is, <clears throat> it has to be something that's physical, characteristic of the land, of the property that you're dealing with. And what they're trying to distinguish, at least when I read the case law, that the, the most sensitive case law, they're saying, look, if you come in and it's just a cost factor, that is not a physical characteristic of the land, and so therefore you can't grant a variance for just a cost factor. Now, if you have some unique, if you have, part. and so essentially that's, you know, to go deeper than that, we'd have to have the facts before us and try to figure out how, how they sort of shake and bake. But essentially what we're talking about is something that's, that's physical, as opposed to just, as we say, a mere inconvenience, which to me is just code word for saying, look, it's too expensive, I can't do it. So that's the best we're going to be able to do because it comes out of case law, so we will continue not to really understand it and what, what it is. What we're, I understand what you are saying, that it is unique. I understand what you're saying, that it's not that, but there's another provision that talks about cost, where you can't just be doing it because you want to make more money. But what is, see, well, okay. Can you find, try to find us a better way to say what this case law is trying to say for the benefit of everybody? Thank you. I, I think it's really important if there's a way. It is hard. So, well, that's a whole different part of the thing, same thing. Okay, so um, we're gonna look at lines 16 to 22 here and see if we can build a better mousetrap. Yes. Okay. Please. Ms. Boyd. Um, yes, we need a better mousetrap, but I'm going to make a different suggestion. <coughs> I would suggest that the problem isn't in the language. It's in, it's in the dysfunction that we find at the zoning board. Sorry. You can't fix it. I mean, well, no, actually, there are things that we're not requiring, apparently, that perhaps can be put into this, this code. For instance, um, our zoning board. Let's not, let's stick with 5308 and they the don't, required findings. They don't make the findings. Huh? They don't make the findings. We're not, but I'm saying I don't want to go into what their cases are. I want to talk about. No language. Right. But it, it doesn't matter what the language is. If the zoning board doesn't actually make the findings, if they just vote yes or vote no, they don't discuss these issues at all. And I agree with the law department, there is tons of case law on this. But it should be the zoning board discussing, deliberating on this issue and making an informed decision that they're willing to stand by and that they're willing to sign and vote on. And none of these things happen. Okay. So. Yes, I agree. But we can't, we, that's another issue, yeah. We, you know, we, we can write a commandment that says the zoning board no, must no, do its job. No, 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 the, no, there are findings. And that's the next section. It says the other required findings right here. It's all outlined right here what they must do. I know, and it's in the current code as well. No. And then, and then what we're saying we're is they told don't do it. But we don't want to have a lengthy discussion of. Okay, no, I'm not. I'm uh, not being talking about personalities. I'm no, talking I mean, about the institution. Yeah, but we're spelling out in the bill what their standards are and what they're supposed to do. Okay, 
We're not going to sit here and talk about why they don't do it or no, what they don't we do. Could admit, we could put something in this code that and, will make a requirement that might... Give us the language. I what is it? Right. Give us the language. Not, not right now, but... Yeah. 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 Why well, pick on an easy target? He said, why well, pick on an easy target? It's hard. Okay. Um, page 5308 on page 92. Anything else on that? Going on to page 93, the remainder of 5308. Okay. 5309 on page 93. 5309. 5309 on page 93. 5309. Go ahead, Ms. Floyd. Um, line 17 under 5309. Okay. Um, this is a real change from what we have now. Uh, the the um, ability of the BMZA to make indefinite extensions. In you know just indefinite extensions repeatedly without notice or hearing, um, the the predictability you know there's there's no there there has to be some kind of a limit and we and there is right now there is there are some limitations in the current code. Okay, so um, we're going to just say what will the limit be, right? I would move to delete that okay. section. Right, I don't think we have enough here for right now, but let's put that in as But a um, I would move to delete. I've got my X marked a okay. month ago. Okay, so I'm going to put on here... Um, 14, to eight, 14 to 17, page 93. Delete language that says extension by BMZA. Okay, in I'm... Which it grants an extension of this one-year period. I am into my third year with an unterminated case. One ex year extension ending in November of 2013, going into now its third year, and this has not yet been terminated as um, a variance. I just want to, I just would like to add, I mean, the, the reason why you have extensions in the first place is because you can get hung up in litigation. Uh, and through no fault that somebody's suing you, your time period could be, expire if you just have just a one-year requirement. So, I mean, so it, it allows for some flexibility in those types of cases. And this is supposed to be for good cause. I do read the, I do read the language here for good cause. Now, that can be, that's very flexible, of course. But certainly for litigation, that you may not have any control over, um, and you could just go right past say that deadline. Well, we're not voting on it right now. All right, we have, but I, yeah, and I would so like to say that what happens is a controversial situation gets approved. A year goes by. Somebody comes in with a minor amendment, it gets extended for a year without any notice. Then it's, uh, the other year goes by, nothing has happened. No permit has been pulled. Third year. Now, I know I'm not supposed to talk about specifics, so I won't, except good cause ain't gonna make it. I got a neighborhood that turned out by the scores against this thing to begin with, it's dead, and it has not been declared so and put in the ground. Okay, we've got Thank a you. recommendation from them. Um, 5.3.10, the chart of the variance process. You just need to review that chart to make sure that it will reflect any changes that have been made in these respective amendments. Ms. Kunz. Um, just a note, at the end of each of the subtitles of this, it refers to charts, and all of the charts will need amended based on the changes proposed, adding in council authority, changing processes. Okay, so we just make a note that the charts needed amended accordingly, okay? 
Um, All right. Now, just for clarification on the charts, uh, just a, a technical. They, uh, this was legislative reference. You'll note they're referred to as figures, as opposed to tables to differentiate. Figures are illustrative and not statute, and tables are statute. Okay, so we'll say figures need to be amended accordingly. So we should call them figures versus tables. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it is um, seven o'clock, uh, and. We have been working on two-hour schedules, so we are, we've completed um, subtitle three of title five. The next work session of City Council Bill 120152, Transform Baltimore Zoning, will be held on Tuesday, April 8th at 10 a.m. We will begin where we ended this evening on page 93. Line 21, subtitle four, conditional uses. Thank you all for attending today's, this evening's Land Use and Transportation Committee work session.